welcome everybody to our solemn community observance of Memorial Day. As customary, we now invite all veterans to, fo to come forward and assemble here in front of the monument in order to stand in solidarity to those men and women whom we honor today. So all veterans, no matter what your service, please come forward at this time. Go ahead, Dad. By the chair. Stand by that chair. We want you all to stand together in final salute. All veterans, please come forward. We wish to thank the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts for their participation and their help in this Memorial Day observance. Cold bottled water will be available at the VFW tent at no charge, and scouts will be going around with water. Only one day is dedicated to honoring the ultimate sacrifices made by Americans in war, and that day is Memorial Day. So on this Memorial Day, 2013, let's remind our co-workers, neighbors, friends, and family members that those who died while in harm's way were young Americans who had lives that were only beginning cut short so the rest of us could pursue our dreams. We will now have the national anthem by the Brandon High School Band. have a choral music presentation by the Brandon High School Choir.
Dickinson. Well, good morning. I'm, I'm very humbled to be here in the presence of so many veterans who have also served before me, well before me, and I was, I was just humbled to watch the various uniforms uh, walking across the grass and coming to the ceremony. So thank you all for your service and thank you for attending today. In our present day and age, less than 1% of our nation's population has any tie to military service. As we freely go about our daily lives, consumed by the events of the days, weeks, and months, we tend to forget that soldiers have died to win our freedoms. Memorial Weekend to many is a three-day weekend that kicks off the summer. Of our four seasons in Michigan, springtime represents new life, new birth. We are moving and looking forward. Memorial Day, however, is a time to pause and reflect on our foundation and the root of our freedom. To reflect on those who no longer can plant flowers or enjoy a walk on a spring day holding the hand of their son, daughter, or loved one. It is a day to honor the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines who made the ultimate sacrifice defending and supporting our great country and its interest around the world. Memorial Day is an opportunity for Americans to pay homage to those who died serving our nation and acknowledge the immense debt we owe them their families, and the loved ones they left behind who painfully but proudly remember their contributions and ultimate sacrifice on this and every day. From our humble beginnings as a nation to our current status as a superpower, the men and women of this great country have never hesitated to answer the call to defend our nation against its enemies, giving their all to preserve the freedoms we hold dear. But it wasn't until after our Civil War that we began formally recognizing our fallen with a national holiday. Since its inception in 1868, Memorial Day has become one of our nation's most important holidays. The story of Memorial Day began almost 150 years ago in the summer of 1865 when a local druggist, Henry Wells, mentioned to some of his friends that gathering at a gathering that while praising the living veterans of the Civil War, it would be well to remember the patriotic death by placing flowers on their graves. Nothing became of this suggestion until he renewed the idea the following spring to Army General John Murray. General Murray himself was a Civil War hero. Intensely patriotic, he supported the idea completely and marshaled veteran support. Plans were developed for a more complete celebration by a local citizens committee headed by Mr. Wells and General Murray. On May 5, 1866, the village was decorated with flags at half staff, draped with evergreens, and participants in mourning black. Veterans, civic societies, and residents led by General Murray marched the strains of music toward the three village cemeteries. One year later, on May 5, in 1867, the ceremonies were repeated. <coughs> Memorial Day was originally known, as previously stated, Decoration Day because it was time set aside to honor the nation's Civil War dead by decorating their graves. It was the first widely observed, or, excuse me, it was first widely observed on May 30th, 1868 to commemorate the sacrifices of the Civil War soldiers. Army General John A. Logan, the Commander-in-Chief of the Veterans Organization, Grand Army of the Republic, Proclaimed May 30th as Decoration Day by General Order 11 on May 5th of 1868. This was two years after the 1866 commemoration in Waterloo, New York. By Congress proclamation in 1966, Waterloo was cited as the birthplace of Memorial Day 100 years earlier. After World War I, the day became observed in honor of those who had died in all U.S. wars. It was renamed Memorial Day. Since 1971, Memorial Day has been observed on the last Monday of May. Memorial Day is traditionally observed with the laying of wreath at the Tomb of the Unknowns in Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. A wreath laying at the Air Force Memorial, also in Arlington, near our nation's capital. And by religious services, parades, and speeches nationwide. Flags, insignia, and flowers are placed on the graves of veterans in local cemeteries. 
This day also marks the nat a national moment of remembrance established by Congress. This sliver of time set aside a moment of for Americans, wherever they are, at 3 p.m., local time on, Mor on Memorial Day, to pause in an act of national unity. The moment does not replace traditional Memorial Day events, rather as a time, one minute, for all to honor and respect those who died for our freedom. In this shared moment of remembrance, we connect as Americans wherever you are. Since the Revolutionary War, American military members have paid the ultimate price for the freedoms we hold dear today. During the Revolutionary War, we lost more than 25,000 freedom seekers who fought for their independence from Great Britain. America lost more than half a million during the Civil War. 525,000 Americans died in World Wars I and II while an additional 54,000 and 58,000 brave Americans perished during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. 4,488 were lost in Iraq. Today we honor these Americans who sacrificed their lives for the freedoms we hold near and dear today. We also honor those who voluntarily give up their time to be with their families as they serve our nation in support of Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. Today, our nation still has thousands of troops in Afghanistan, once again pinning our most precious resource, our sons and daughters, in a global fight against enemies whose fanatical ideas threaten our very way of life. Today, our soldiers, sailors, and airmen, and Marines are deployed around the world, waging the war and fulfilling vital roles in the joint interdependent fight. Whether at home or abroad, our forces have the unique ability of 24-hour global mobility and engagement to hold any target set at risk in any weather or threat environment anywhere in the world, to command and control our activities, and to assess our efforts. On this Memorial Weekend, take the time to remember our predecessors' sacrifices. Consider the legacy of valor and courage they left to us by our soldiers who fought in World War I and again in World War II. <coughs> Remember those who fought and died on the grounds in the skies over Korea and in the jungles of Vietnam. Remember our troops we've, lo we've lost most recently in Iraq and Afghanistan. Abraham Lincoln said, the mystic cords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart should swell into a mighty chorus of remembrance, gratitude, and rededication on this solemn occasion. Let's honor those who've paved the way for our freedoms and for those who continue to serve. Let's honor those we've lost in our current wars. As of May 20th, 2013, 2,227 service members have paid the ultimate sacrifice during Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. Let us remember the 363 soldiers we lost this past year supporting operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, an average of one a day, so that you and I can remain free in this great nation of ours. They will be missed. At various times within each year, when a southeastern Michigan soldier has been killed, the dignified transfer and remains of our fallen heroes arrive at Selford National Guard Base where I work. The entire base populace is notified and lines the streets on both sides to rend a final, render a final salute to our fallen heroes as they return from battle. These soldiers and airmen served with distinction and honor. They are heroes to us all. As we remember those we have lost, let us offer a thank you for their sacrifice, a thank you to their families for all they have sacrificed as well. They offered their sons and daughters, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, mothers, and fathers to serve the nation and its allies throughout the world. Their sacrifice does not go unnoticed by our nation or by the people for whom our heroes shed their very lifeblood protecting and defending. While Memorial Day is known as a time of remembrance, it is also a time for us in uniform to reaffirm our own commitment and selfless service by doing so. We do not only honor the memory of those before us,
but we also vow to carry on the legacy of excellence in the world's best military force. Heed President Roosevelt's warning and never forget the brave men and women who died to earn us our privilege, our privileged American way of life. We will never forget them and we will never forget our efforts to keep this nation free. As a grateful nation pays tribute to our brothers and sisters in arms who gave their last full measure for their country, we thank you for your service, hard work, and dedication, and all you do every day to fly, fight, and win for America. May God bless those who have selflessly paid the ultimate price for our freedoms. May he bless the families and loved ones who on this day with pride painfully remember the love they traded for our freedom. And in closing, I would like to thank each of you for honoring this day, for your greater perspective and understanding of the source of our freedoms. And I would ask, once again echoed, that you would share this experience, share what this day means to those that don't attend events like this. When you're at your backyard barbecues, share it with your neighbors and your children. Take a moment, if you would, at some point today, and raise a glass and remember. Thank you very much. Chuck Ellis, our senior vice commander, will now provide the honor roll of war dead. On the wall behind me are the names of men from our community who died while in the service of the United States Armed Forces. We honor them, we extend to them and their memory our deepest respect. In the Civil War, John Tucker, Union Army. Egbert Smith, Union Army. Warren Smith, Union Army. Abram Perry, Union Army. World War I, Frank Scott, United States Army. Ben Richmond, United States Army. Rory Hartwig, United States Army. In World War II, Vernon Pletcher, United States Navy. Leon Abram, United States Navy. Leo Flood, United States Army. Jack Hickey, United States Army. Floyd Hubble, United States Army. Tom Livingston, United States Army. George Marsh, United States Army. Thomas Tier. United States Army. Robert Turnbull, United States Navy. Roman Wadarki, United States Army. In the Korean War, Bernard Ausnamer, Marine Corps. In the Vietnam War, Thomas Sherman, United States Army. James Sutton, Marine Corps. In Afghanistan, Joseph Miracle, United States Army. All veterans, present arms. <laughs> 